scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. It takes power to really reveal Jesus. Hallelujah. Yesterday we had a very brief session and we began our discourse from Genesis 1 for those of you who were not there yesterday. Let's do a quick recap for two or three minutes. Genesis chapter 1, we started from verse 1 to 4, revealing God's definition of power and the scriptural reference that Genesis chapter 1, especially from verse 3 and 4, represents our ultimate pursuit as far as walking in power is concerned. You know where to stop in your journey of the pursuit for genuine spiritual power when you attain unto this standard. Are we together? 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens or the heaven and the earth. 2. It says, Now the earth was without form, void, darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, he says. Verse 3. And God said, this is power now and God said and there was and God said and there was that means you truly are walking in power when you sustain the ability to say and it happens if you say and it does not happen you are not walking in power and God said and there was and then we did say that there is still a step further, verse 4, that everything God said, he saw that it was good. So if it is God, you don't just see evil, you will see that it is good. If God says, he will see, and what he will see has to be good, because it is every good and perfect gift that comes from above. Is that true? Hallelujah. So we challenged ourselves that in Genesis 1 and verse 26, man was made in the image and the likeness of God. Remember yesterday? We said how that Adam was the first man to experience this holistic dimension of God in him. To be created in the image and the likeness of God. Every other creature hitherto had been created in the likeness of God but not the image of God the image of God was his exclusive gift to man hallelujah praise the Lord and that since man was created in his image and in his likeness that means if God were true to say man was created in his image and likeness then man should be able to like God say and see what he said is that true do you agree with me hallelujah and the first test would happen with adam the bible says god brought the animals to adam so that he would name them and we did say yesterday that naming them was not to give them scientific names it was science that did that job to name them means to give them their characteristic identity and the bible says whatsoever adam called it that was the name thereof consistent with that rule this must be the compass that guides us because every time in scripture you see this litmus test 
if you say and you see it is proof that there is power if you say and you do not see it is proof that something is wrong are we together now yes because many of us the area of our christian experience where we have been frustrated in principally is the lack of the manifestation of our desires especially the things that we say we make a lot of bold confessions in the name of jesus i am the head and not the tail in the name of jesus the lines are fallen for me in pleasant places i have authority over principalities and powers but our experiences don't seem to line up with those things and so this conference was designed to number one remind us that we are in the days of his power and then to show us the dynamics of truly walking in spiritual power and let me say this with a particular bias to men of god in the days that we live in we truly need power if our messages are not backed up with power then we will be prepared for empty pews because there are many options satan has been very intentional through the years in fabricating options many options in as much as our messages are powerful because they are the platforms for communicating doctrine we must sustain the grace to have power i made up my mind that i would never be a powerless believer number one two i would never be a powerless ambassador of the kingdom number three that i would never be a powerless man of god when you are a powerless man of god you will be jealous you will be angry you will fight you will hate yourself you will hate others from the lens of your frustration and many other things the baggages that come with being powerless is not worth it hallelujah so please pay attention as we share on the laws of spiritual power there are laws in this kingdom the laws of the kingdom guarantee um, and they make predictable the ways of God if God is to make the possibilities in the kingdom available to every believer without any prejudice then he must capture the workings of those possibilities in laws so that anyone could engage it and receive the results remember i think it was during um, the pastors and leaders conference if i'm right on that i thought that every time if you open the bible there are three things you are interacting with three realms of spiritual possibilities number one you are in, you are interacting with the promises of god contained in scripture are the promises of god number two contained in scripture are the principles of the kingdom number three contained in scripture are prophecies so every time you open your bible you are interacting with these three dimensions the promises of god a representation of his the boundary of his commitment to the believer number two the modus operandi of the kingdom called the mysteries or the secrets of the kingdom now when you are interacting with the promises of god you just need knowledge and then to sustain how to petition him based on those promises but when you are encountering or interacting with the principles of the kingdom you will need the spirit of wisdom because the principles of the kingdom are not all in plain sight some of them are hidden in parables some of them are hidden in stories you will need the spirit of wisdom to help you unravel a scripture would have profited you when you can draw the mystery out of it otherwise you will just be reading a novel you're reading a story an interesting story a story that god was involved in it takes the holy spirit to be able to draw out the mystery that is hidden in that story and then number three of course is prophecy it's important for us to know that beyond this realm and beyond this time there are realities that will happen even after our dispensation the power of prophecy is that it gives you hope to know that even though i am not in the future yet i have seen the end 
Are we together now? Because it is dangerous. There's something called in our world the fear of the unknown. Every time the future is hazy, it brings fear. And so God being Alpha Omega goes to the end and reveals it to us. That the end is victory regardless what happens. The end is a life of victory and grace with Christ directly with him in fellowship. Not just spiritually as we do now, but that we will be with him, be changed to become like him in that fullness and we will live together. So this gives us hope. But now we are discussing the laws of the kingdom that every time you see the power of God activated in the life of a man, predictably so, in ever increasing measures, there is no lock there. There must have been an activation of, you see, mastery is measured in consistency. No one is really rewarded for doing something professionally once. You would have to do it for a long time. Are we together now? Yes. He that strives for mastery, the Bible says, is not crowned, except he strives lawfully. Open our eyes in the name of Jesus. Law number one, that any believer who seeks to truly walk in power, genuine spiritual power, must subscribe to the law of spiritual illumination law number one the first spiritual law that controls the manifestation of power in the life of a believer is called the law of spiritual illumination genesis chapter 13 from verse 14 to 17 there is a relationship between your sight the light that comes from it translated to translated to knowledge and then you're walking in power here's what he told abraham after lot had separated from him he said lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are northward southward eastward and westward 15 for the land which you see not the land which is available it is the one you see that i will give unto you and your descendants lift up your eyes and see the part of scripture that you see is the one i will give unto you not what i am able to do the one you see if you only see healer you can only reveal him as healer you will be surprised that you will be a powerful healer and you will be broke you will suffer as if jesus lied about prosperity because that is the area where you can see if you see him as the God that restores, you will experience restoration and nothing else but restoration. This is why he, he defined the scope of your sight. Don't see northward alone. Don't see southward alone. These are imbalances. He says make sure you broaden the scope of your horizon. See northward. See southward. See eastward. Don't just see a healer alone. He's not only a healer. You need to know him as a provider. You need to know him as a lifter. You need to capture as many dimensions of him that your sight can capture. Because as far as you can see, it will be given to you. It would have been better if it stopped with you. But your descendants will also follow your plane of sight. He says it is given to you and your descendants. That means if I limit my view and my perspective about God, everybody I mentor, I will mentor from the lens of my limitation and they will follow suit. Lift up your eyes. Are we blessed now? And see. We make a miracle walk promise keeper light in the darkness my god all one person we make miracle walk let me give you an assignment dear bible student after this program before the evening service go online and search how many names of god are revealed in the bible from genesis to revelation i will not tell you praise the name of the lord 
find out how many names in nigeria they complain if they give you up to four names they say well, what is there ah, but it's too much two is okay your name and whatever you found as your father's name that's that's enough now here is god carrying names because a name is more than a means of identification a name is an accreditation this is who you are this is who you are again i want to stop but you are not stopping so i have to keep giving you names i keep giving you names the assignment of every generation is through their experience with god they should find a new name and add to the list of the names of god and if our generation does not contend deep enough with god to give him a name we should not just recycle the names we heard there are more names the name is a product and a capture of our experience with god until jacob came there was no god of jacob until abraham came there was no god of abraham <clears throat> so you have an assignment that through your lifetime you bring a name that you can hand over to your children and say this is a capture of the dimension of god that my whole lifetime it was like a research and at the end of my life here is my conclusion that he's more than this hallelujah the power of spiritual illumination what you see if you do not know that god can go this far you will not release your faith to see him go that far are we together yes in ephesians chapter 1 popular scripture from verse 15 we read and here we see paul ephesians 1 from verse 15 paul praying over the church in ephesus ephesians 1 and verse 15 and he was praying a very very deep and a very spiritual prayer over it says therefore i also after i heard of your faith in the lord jesus notice all the things he's hearing about your faith in the lord jesus christ and your love for all the saints next verse it says i do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayer 17 that the god of our lord jesus christ even the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him uh-huh the eyes of your understanding being enlightened amplified says flooded with light that ye may know you see that now ye may know and understand the hope which he has called you and how rich is glorious inheritance in the saints he set apart once 19 he says so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believed as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength which he exerted in christ when he raised him from the dead now you know what he's saying he's praying that you understand the extent of power that is available to you as a believer and he's saying that same power what was what was used to raise jesus from the dead the same power given to the believer it takes light and it takes knowledge to be able to walk in spiritual power this is very important psalm 82 from verse 5 to 7 another popular scripture the bible says they know not so this is a knowledge problem neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high verse 7 you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes why they know not neither will they understand they know not that god lifts they know not that god restores they know not that god can favor they know not that in him you can find speed they know not that there is dominion over principalities and powers they know not neither will they understand it is important that we trust God for the spirit of illumination to be able to open us up. There 
is a direct relationship between the knowledge of the word of God not just the word of God the knowledge of what is written and your experience as far as power is concerned it will not happen to you just because it is written it will happen when you know that it is written it is when the light comes that you arise not when the light is there it must come to you just because the power holding company has light does not mean darkness will go away from your house until the light that is with the power holding company gets to your house that is when it profits you so you find solace in knowing that there is light there your next assignment is to find a way of connecting with the light that is there no matter the distance from their office or their station to your house there is nobody who frowns at the effort of drawing light from anywhere to his house have you seen someone getting angry and say my house is too far no no matter how far if it means to put pole wires if it means to use a generator whatever effort you do it with pride the most important thing is that there must be light in your house and you smile with joy as you see everywhere illuminated this is how it must be you must draw that truth from wherever it is until it gets to your life are we blessed i submit to you truthfully that our generation is largely very ignorant we say a lot of things that we do not understand job 42 and verse 3 this is a lesson for many of us job was also a victim of that job 42 and verse 3 behold job 42 42 and verse 3 42 and verse 3 It says, who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? It says, therefore I have uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. I was just speaking, speaking, speaking about things I did not understand. Speaking about things I did not know. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the lily of the valley. And the realm of the spirit is saying, if you really knew what you were saying. Do you know what it means for him to be the rose of Sharon? The lily of the valley? What is a lily doing in a valley? That is a miracle. And yet you say it. The lily of the valley means he can become anything in any valley, in any wilderness whatsoever. Knowledge. 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 We will continue to embarrass ourselves as believers until we contend for light high level spiritual illumination if all the lights in this beautiful auditorium were put off and you just light your phone there is light there but not enough to turn the night today you must have light enough to turn your night today john chapter 1 and verse 5 it says the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not hallelujah light when you have sufficient light you will be able to see why do you use headlamps even though you have eyes in the night it is the presence of the headlamps if your light goes bad even if your eyes are good you are in trouble is that true your sight depends on the illumination it is in your light that we see light so it is possible that what you see is darkness if the light that comes to you is not true light he said that was the true light that means there must be false light that was the true light that lighted every man is God speaking to us one more scripture and then we'll rush quickly to the next point Mark chapter 8 mark chapter 8 from verse 22 very interesting story mark chapter 8 and verse 22 jesus now he cometh to bethsaida and they bring a blind man unto him listen look up please did you know that there were certain people in scripture who were not healed in jesus's ministry but there was no single blind man that jesus left blind Jesus took the issue of blindness personal. Everywhere he saw a blind man, he insisted 
that he was healed. There were 10 leprous people. They went, 10 were healed, only one was whole. You see that? He didn't call the remaining nine to say, they are not whole, return back, let me make you whole. But for this blind man, watch what Jesus did. They bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. Next verse. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, he put his hands on him and asked, and asked him if he saw aught. Here's what the man said. He looked up and said, I see. But here is what I see. I see men as trees. I see prosperity, but I see it as a burden. I see it as a cause. I see the healing ministry, but I see it as something that is past. And Jesus said, we need to correct your understanding. I'm still going to perform. I'm not ashamed to do it again. Where did you find in the Bible where he did the same miracle twice on one person? We are talking of the mighty God. But with respect to the opening of your eyes, I will do it as many times till you see well. That means just because you studied it yesterday, you need to study again to see. What you saw yesterday began the journey but may not take you so far. Jesus is teaching us a lesson with the opening of the blind eye. That when it has to do with blindness, lay hands and verify what is seen just because the man is saying i see it will be a risk to leave the person what do you see he said i see men but i see them as trees that means based on my viewpoint i don't know the difference between men and trees if you ask this man to write a book on vision Imagine what he's going to write. Is that true? He will tell you based on his theology that a man and a tree are two, the same, are, are two things. And that trees can walk. And men also can walk. That trees are re re related to, ma to men. This is based on his theology. And he will be right because that's what he's saying. Except... That what he's saying is not all that there is. So Jesus performed this miracle. And afterwards he put his hand again upon his eyes. And made him to look up. And he was restored. And he saw every man clearly. And he saw every mystery clearly. And he saw every dimension of God clearly someone lay your hands on your eyes and declare lord open up tear up that veil let me see clearly let me see clearly i saw something last year during activate conference but let me see clearly i saw something about the healing ministry i saw something about your power but let me see clearly clearly I saw something about the prophetic ministry but let me see clearly I saw something about worship the ministry of prophetic psalmistry but let me see clearly someone is praying for everyone that asketh receive it man of God I saw something about ministry and church growth and the power of God to lift men but let me see clearly if Jesus was not embarrassed to lay hands on the man a second time as God then we must not be ashamed to pray let me see again let me see again hallelujah praise the name of the Lord listen let me tell you something the beats that I know and I've seen in ministry I have learned a very very powerful lesson in ministry that at any level there is truly so much more than we know and if we do not sustain the grace to cry for the miracle of greater light we will camp around a dimension of God and build a monument around that dimension whereas there is northwards southwards he would have just said lift your eyes but he said no if you are looking this way you can't see what is behind but there is something behind if you are looking left you can say there is only one screen in this auditorium 
you are right based on your vision you are wrong based on the truth you see the fact is what is what based on your vision but the truth is what is based on God's standpoint Acts chapter 18 is God helping us this morning remember you came to church this is the house of God Acts chapter 18 let's start from verse 24 very briefly reading quickly and then we'll move to the next point this was a very very interesting story that we blessed my life many years ago and taught me that no matter how far you go in God there are greater dimensions as far as understanding the ways of God is concerned Acts 18 from verse 24 and a certain Jew named Apollos the Bible says he was born at Alexandria an eloquent man a mighty man in scripture he came to Ephesus the place of knowledge this man was instructed in the way of the Lord the Bible says he was fervent in spirit he spake and taught that means he was not just a student he had risen to a point where he was accredited to even be a teacher he spake and taught diligently in the things of the Lord but there was a limitation please read the last sentence you see there ready one to read stop 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 knowing only <laughs> leave whatever he knows only that that's not our concern knowing only the fact that the bible recognizes that this eloquent man fervent in spirit mighty in scripture yet knowing only knowing only great apostle joshua selman mighty in this but knowing only you see that verse 26 the bible says he began to speak boldly so take note everything he's saying is only everything he's saying is only he began to speak boldly in the synagogue whom when aquila and priscilla had heard him the bible says they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of the lord more perfectly they didn't say you are talking nonsense but i, I can imagine how happy they were listening to him shouting and sweating on stage and they were impressed but they say oh dear look at the gaps in this man's understanding after the service he thought they came for prayer and they came and said look we love you we were impressed with that message but come sit down there is something we need to show you this is a lesson dear preachers it's not everybody who is being impressed with what we're saying there are people who are standing from a high altitude in the spirit and watching how we walk like toddlers in this realm you, you see them watch with humility and sometimes they are very humble and they, they appreciate us but if our hearts are open they can show us the way of the kingdom more perfectly i would learn this lesson in a very dramatic way in kano many years ago i went to kano you've heard the story ministering under the power of god and i gave a word of knowledge about this dear woman and she came out very unassuming and I said mama I want to pray for you the Lord tells me you are an intercessor she said yes and she said apostle I finish my Bible every 15 days that was her covenant with God 15 days she finishes this Bible every 15 days and I stood there with the protocol standing by me with the mic and I'm saying okay I have seen Jesus oh this man talking to you i've seen the lion of the tribe of judah and i'm standing before this woman who is humble ready to receive prayer from this man of god and the man of god is standing there with the awareness that this one there is a knowing only somewhere here if you read your bible in 15 days let me tell you this it is not that you are a good reader is you have dominion you don't know the kind of spirits that fight your study of the world you will be able to finish a novel four times as big as the bible even in one week 
but the grace to read the Bible and start again. You have overcome almost any temptation any man can get. It is not about going from Genesis to Revelation. You try it. <laughs> ah. You will keep repenting in that journey because of how you will backslide and disappoint yourself. Lord, I'm sorry you will fast again and try it and go back and try it and go back and you may do well and pass Genesis, get to Leviticus and say, what in the world is going? You will go back, you will back. Oh dear. So for a woman to finish in 15 days, I didn't tell you it was a Hausa Bible. It was not a Bible with pictures and images to encourage you while you are going and some intelligent commentary somewhere that just supports your study. The house of Bible is all that is there is just the scripture straight as you are reading you continue moving can I tell you this every time I come for a meeting like this in as much as God is using me to bless his people I am aware that there are, there are also anointings within that meeting and I've programmed my spirit that Lord whilst I am preaching if for any reason my spirit man picks any grace that I need, I've programmed my spirit in partnership with the Holy Ghost to draw it to my life quietly while I'm teaching. I know what to do with it when I leave that place. So a man can finish preaching and know that he did not leave empty. It's strange. Everything he brought left, but he still returned full. Because while he was releasing what God gave him, there was discernment you can be here and while you are teaching god is teaching you something while you are preaching concurrently it's when you go back you say i hope you learned what i taught you he will act as if you were not preaching i wish i were lying i would have just apologized and said let's be serious but i am very serious about what i'm saying are we blessed knowing only the moment you know this, the secret is to assume the position of a student forever and never be ashamed. The moment you confront a dimension that you do not know, do not be ashamed. It is this pride and this arrival mentality, especially for some of us that God has helped a bit, you know, we've seen a few results here and there. Chances are that you can be so embarrassed when you see an area you know nothing about. That's why it's safe to be on your knees permanently. So that whatever meets you there, you don't have to, from that exalted position now, embarrassingly kneel down. Just kneel down by default, knowing that something will come that will require me kneeling down to receive. Law number two, we have to hurry up. Are we blessed? Do not forget... You must pay attention to knowledge look northwards some of you have been looking northwards for 10 years god is saying when will you start looking at other dimensions some of you have been looking southwards this represent different dimensions and god said look northward southward eastward westward capture all of the dimensions of these possibilities so that you can be a maximum blessing as far as dispensing the power of God is concerned hallelujah number two the second spiritual law that governs the manifestation of power in the life of a believer now please pay attention this is a very important law it's called the law of submission the law of submission he last ku brandi gebara kusiata james chapter 4 and verse 7 please james chapter 4 and verse 7 please read with me let's read as a church ready one to read please submit yourselves therefore to god did you say full stop there full stop submit yourselves therefore to god then it now says resist the devil from the standpoint of that submission and he leaves you with an assurance consistent with genesis remember resist the devil and he will flee from you 
so when you resist the devil and he does not flee the problem may not be the devil the problem may be from the position you are resisting him are you getting what i'm saying now he says submit yourselves therefore remember the intention is to be free from the devil but he says start by submitting yourself therefore unto god and then resist the devil and he will flee from you write this down you are only as powerful as your relationship with the authority that sends and backs you you are only as powerful as your relationship with the authority that sends and backs you you are only as powerful as your relationship with the authority that sends and backs you please look up if i told you right now or if you saw a picture of me and the u.s secretary of state would that make any effect or would that create any effect on your perception let's assume you've been trying to look for a u.s visa and you see me snap with the u.s consular general here in nigeria and probably the one in charge of africa and then you see me snap again with the secretary of state would you want to know me would you respect me why because the fact that i have this level of proximity with them enough to to have a photo it tells you that you can leverage on that relationship when people say they are close to government or close to power as we call it even if we don't like them we seem to respect them you are as powerful as your relationship with the authority that sends and backs you is concerned so every time spiritual power is far from your life is also telling us the level of your relationship with the authority that sent you and the authority that backs you in every nation there are people who even though regardless their political office we say this one is close to the president this one is close to the prime minister and you will be surprised that the official person you were to meet you can bypass that person because you are looking for results you can even meet a little girl simply because she's the president's daughter is that true and you are talking with her whereas officially there was a route to follow and the lady says okay let me talk to my daddy for you and she talks and says i spoke to my father and he said come and see him tomorrow and everybody is angry you didn't follow the right way so well he has asked me to come are you getting the point now listen to me submission is a very powerful mystery that has not been understood in the body of christ that there is no individual who sustains the power within himself now i have taught here if i recall that the the nature of the dominion that we have been given as believers is not absolute dominion there are two levels of dominion there is absolute dominion and there is shared dominion is that true yes so the the dominion that the saints have received is not absolute dominion is shared dominion shared dominion it's like the light you have in your house you have light but it depends the the power holding company does not depend on you for light they generate it you have light and you can even help somebody within the limit of your partnership with them is that true the day a relationship goes sour with them what happens Jesus revealed the power of submission in Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, let's hurry up please. Matthew chapter 8 from verse 5. Matthew 8 from verse 5. Very instructive. Let's follow carefully. When Jesus was entered into Capernaum, the Bible says there came to him a centurion. A centurion would be the equivalent of a captain. Are we together? and beseeching him what did he say verse 6 saying lord my servant lieth home sick of the palsy grievously tormented next verse and jesus said unto him i will come and heal him that means i give you that honor 
I'm going to go all the way and come to your house. And then this man shocks Jesus with a very profound statement that is a lesson for us. Are you ready? The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only. Does this look like Genesis 1 verse 3 to 4? Is there something that man knew? Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Because if it is God, when he says it, he will see it. Is that true? Next verse. This is what supported his understanding. For I am a man under authority. That means this protocol is not strange. By reason of my work with the army, I understand authority and the power that comes through submission. I am a man under authority. In this case, the authority of the Roman government. Having soldiers also under me. So you will have people under you and things under you to the degree to which you are under an authority. Everything will be above you if you are alone. This man is teaching something powerful. I first, I first came under authority. Then, as a result of that, I now have soldiers under me. Because there is a threefold purpose of authority. Number one, provision. Number two, protection. Number three, promotion. This is the purpose of authority. Number one, provision. Making the resources for your excelling available. Number two, promotion. By providing accreditation and leverage. Number three, protection. A system of defense while you go. I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. Now watch this. By reason of the authority, I say to this man, there you go. And he goeth. Genesis 1 verse 3. 3 and 4 again. Are you seeing the pattern now? I am under authority. So when I say, I expect compliance. I can say to one, come. So when you are under authority, it gives you the power to say go. And it gives you the power to say come. Are we together now? And he cometh. And to my servant, do this. And he doeth it. Verse 10. Jesus had it and marveled. I didn't see you in any of my lectures. Who taught you this? Where did you learn this irrefutable secret of the kingdom? That in your submission is your greatness. That in your submission is your power. That it is on the strength of your submission to authority that every other thing under you will hear you too. That means before anything under you obeys, it will check whether there is something you are obeying too. You see, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he says, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. I have not found this construction, this understanding, authority. When Jesus came, he announced that he was the son of God. There was a name Jesus never called himself throughout his earth work. He never said, I am God. No. I do not find it in the Bible. Number two, he never said, I am father. Two words, really. Jesus never called himself father when he walked upon the earth, even though he was equal with God. He called the Holy Ghost father. He called his father, father, but he never called himself father. He remained son, which is the reason why everything hurt him. Because when he walked upon the earth, he continued to let them know that I am under the authority of the father. This is what the centurion understood. So when the demon saw him, they said, we are seeing a 33 year old body, but you are the ancient of this. He said, keep quiet. I'm the son. The moment I say, I am father. They are now authorized to rebel against me because they, I, I violate the law of submission. Can I tell you this? Submission frees you from the responsibility of backing yourself up. It is, it is painful to try to back yourself up. If the centurion tells you go and you do not go, 
you did not disobey him you disobey the government that backs him it now the government now will bring their full weight on you is that true so when God sends you and you go as a man of God you are in trouble it looks very very consoling but now you are left alone to defend yourself but if you go as one sent the son of the living God you see why Peter got it right I know who you are he would have said you are God he said mm -mm. I know who you are based on your exploits you have come as son and the government that backs you is headed by the living God and Jesus said that's it you got it behold what manner of love the father says that the father has bestowed upon us the Bible says that we be called what sons you do not do exploits as father read your Bible exploits is not for father fathers back those who do the exploits exploits is for sons hmm. are we blessed when Jesus went to pray he didn't say God we are one so just listen quietly just because I'm on earth here doesn't mean that don't forget I'm still aware I'm, it's only 33 years here no he went and said our father teaching us how to pray in John 17 when he was praying himself the Bible says he lifted up his eyes to heaven John 17 and verse 1 and he began to pray to the father can I tell you this return to the reality of sonship with the consciousness that there is an authority that backs you you see how children behave the moment you try to threaten them they verify whether their father is there with them and they can do all kinds of things for you in the presence of their father whether they are right or wrong you will deal with them at home but as far as that you have to protect that child for your namesake this is a very powerful key every time i minister I minister as touching this understanding that I may send one number one but that there is an authority that backs me demons will verify it Jesus I know Paul I know who are you who are you does not mean where are you coming from who are you means where is the government that is backing you when David wanted to go and fight Goliath, read your Bible, ladies and gentlemen, there was only one question Saul asked him. Saul did not say, um, uh, okay, I see that you're a fine young man. Give me the antecedents. What have you killed? Mm -mm. He said, whose son are you? That's all I want to know. Let me know what lineage you are connected to because every lineage has its advantage. Whose son are you? Oh, the Benjamite. Go ahead. But I can help you with my armor. He said, no, no, no. Since you agreed that I'm a Benjamite, leave me and see the advantage that that tribe brings. And when he stood before Goliath, Goliath, listen to me, Goliath stood and cursed them in the name of his God. Even as powerful as Goliath was, the secret was he submitted. He, he did not walk, he did not curse them because he was mighty. He cursed them in the name of the authority that gave him that strength. Can I tell you this? Your ministry will step into another dimension. Your life will step into another dimension if you walk conscious of the fact that there is a government in heaven. And you must be vocal and let people see and know that this man standing is only representing a higher spiritual parliament. The God of the universe. So when you speak to demons, before they leave, they verify. Let's check. What is the submission system? It's like an entry code. The moment it is there, they will leave. It's why you see ordinary men doing things that men cannot do. Why? Because it is not done by the men. The men are only conduits. Let me tell you something. There are some results men cannot produce. It is not within the realm of men to do certain things. Are we together? You must make up your mind today to walk in the consciousness of your submission this is the reason why that extension even in a church like this you will be surprised 
how you can ignore the man of God that God has placed over you and you will be surprised that even though you are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit there are certain cheap possibilities that this ministry carries as a mantle you may never walk in it every time you see people who are supposedly connected to you and the grace on you is difficult to flow to them I can tell you something is questionable about the submission even if they kneel down, even if they say good afternoon, good, there are, there are graces that come with authorities, both heavenly and earthly authorities. There are some things as a member of the house on the rock you should never struggle with. No, not excellence. No, not influence. These are graces that come. It's, it's an allocation like mineral resources. But there are people who can be within that place. And yet not enjoy it and strangers can come with that understanding and tap into it in a moment and walk in it is someone learning have you raised people in your house and your own children are not experiencing the spiritual advantage of those people they come as strangers discerning and here you have this knowledge where well, God is changing them in Jesus name but here you have these people who don't discern that daddy is also CEO and you see people come and they tap into that possibility can I tell you this you must be very discerning when it has to do with the subject of authority a woman can be married to a man who has the grace for influence and she may never have a job for years yet that man has been responsible for giving many people jobs the reason is because she's still seeing him as her husband the day she sees that in addition to my being your husband there is an authority that backs you and since i'm under that authority i place a demand There was a time they wanted to beat Paul. Paul didn't say, I'm a Christian. He said, listen, I'm a Pharisee. Look, I, I tap into the immunity that comes with my son. I'm not, I'm a child of God. But with respect to the punishment that is about to come, I am also a Pharisee. Do not forget. Give me my immunity as a Pharisee. You know what it means to be a Pharisee? It's a laborious season of learning and climbing and defending yourself. He said, just because God called me, don't you think I forgot? I, I, I'm a Pharisee. I know all of you before I met Jesus Christ. I was a senior colleague to all of you. Don't downplay me. I am a Pharisee. And everybody brought, they brought themselves back to order. Someone needs to walk to the devil and say, listen to me. First, I am a child of God. There is the authority that backs me. Are we together and then walk conscious of the privileges that you have truly i believe that there are some things that cannot happen to me as a person it may sound arrogant forgive me but it's what i believe and i don't intend to change it i really believe that there are some things that cannot happen to me you want to tell someone be healed and he returns healed you want to tell someone in the name of Jesus I release you let doors be open or you want your own door to be open can I tell you sincerely Portacot is a place of plenty Portacot is a place of glory Portacot is a place of lifting if you don't believe it refer to my first point and then come back to this point and now understand that it is true but the authority politicians have taught us when you want to enter certain circles they say let me show where is the paper who sent you here there are doors that don't open by appointment they open by the authority that accredited you there are jobs in this nation that does they don't publicize there are companies they don't publicize you never know that it is open the fact that you are not aware is a sign that there is nobody helping you it's not hidden it's not bribery they will tell you where is your referral so you find out that they've taken 70 people and you're wondering in my presence I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit I believe in the government of heaven that can back men I do not believe 
that anyone will sit under this atmosphere as I minister and go back the same. This is why you hear me say those things. I would be arrogant and even stupid to be talking by my own strength as a man of God. But you, you, you wait until you see the government that defends these things that we say. We are not empty talkers. He said, open his eyes so that he will see and stop this nonsense fear that he's talking up and down. We are about to die. And he opened his eyes. He saw surrounding that entire mountain, there were angels. This was the revelation Elisha caught. My father, my father, the chariots of horsemen, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Do you know what that means? You alone, you are equivalent to the entire defense system of Israel. What kind of mantle is this that you are carrying? He said you can have it. Now that you have that revelation. Mortal man, awesome God. I'm a mortal man, awesome ordinary man yet a supernatural God you know many times when I'm going for meetings especially crusades I just see people praying when I came in yesterday as late as I came I saw people shouting and rejoicing and in my mind I'm saying oh dear oh dear do I not deserve to be arrested if I just came on my own to have wasted these people's time by what authority do you believe that the sick will be healed that lives will be transformed veterans of the gospel many of you here have left your busy schedule to just sit down under this grace would it not be arrogance for me to stand and believe that you will be blessed just by my speaking as a man no but i give you one assurance this government you see that backs us is a powerful government is the reason why we can call on the nations and tell them come and see what he's doing and not be afraid you know why because we are aware of the governance of this government we are aware of the power of that kingdom but we've been granted the privilege to see that government in action america may keep quiet over some of these nations and warn them gently be careful we will bring sanctions and we'll deal with you just because they have been polite does not mean it's fear. By the time they are talking, they've studied the entire security system and found all the loopholes there. And in one day, they can come and capture everything, crumble their economy and teach them a lesson. This is how God is. So you can see a man gentle as a dove. And yet when the power of God comes, someone who has been in captivity for 10 years, just one moment don't ask the question how did this happen uh -uh. understand that there is an invisible but real government real government real government let me have two or three of the protocol guys we're about to pray just or any three gentlemen please just come up thank you three or four of you i want to teach you something don't forget this There are many things that happen to a man when God calls you. Number one, God gives you a mandate. When God gives you that mandate, listen carefully. Number two, God gives you the backing. Number three, God gives you access to resources, both human and material. Number four, God gives you the platform. Don't, don't forget this. Every time God calls you, these are the things he gives you. Number one, he gives you the mandate, the message, a representation of the dimension of him committed to you. Number two, the backing, the government that protects, defends, and validates that you were sent. Number three, he gives you access to resources, human and material resources. And then number four, he gives you the platform. If you do not have these four things, go back to it for a retreat and verify whether you were called this is what happens the more you walk with god so i'm calling to ministry and here is the angelic and spiritual backing the defense system of heaven that works with me by reason of this there are results i can produce but clearly you see the limitation as i grow in my relationship with this government 
part of the rewards that are given to me every time a new anointing comes upon a man among the things that happen is that there is a greater defense system from heaven a greater backing from heaven are we together so now both of you follow me now you are not seeing them it is only me so when i come for your conference the person who was not healed last year now is healed this year and you are wondering what changed this is what changed a heavier backing from heaven by the time i remain conscious of my submission you knew me five years ago by the time you see me five years later you are thinking this man alone but it's been added now watch this come gentlemen please stand around this pulpit just stand here just stand here just stand here you are going to lift it gently so we hold it here watch this assuming you are not seeing them come sir join them you are not seeing them i'm the only one you are seeing is that true now watch my hand say miracle worker say powerful man drop it down again what sort of a powerful man is this you say but this is what is happening in the realm of the spirit now watch this come now i called you for a conference i said go and bring every sick person look at the level of backing i have i'm about to be embarrassed true or false are you seeing why we must grow because now look at the weight i didn't measure my size spiritually this is where premature manifestation is dangerous we are all men of god you are about to disgrace yourself in a very painful way now look at the kind of load i want to carry before everyone ready let's attempt don't break it and so i try and you are wondering jesus is mentioned the bible was opened prayer happened what happened the government is writing through my limitation this is a letter from heaven you need to come closer to this government because the way the economy of this system works is the greater the relationship the greater the backing now there are men who are so am i boring you add two more gentlemen because god is revealing your spiritual state two more i like these hefty people i ah, know no, no. <laughs> now watch this add two more gentlemen two more gentlemen come come anyone whether protocol or not just come follow me everywhere i go there are people who are like this just follow me i'm going on a crusade ground follow me now all of you very quickly let's lift this as fast as we can come i've not even laid my hands and it's lifted are you seeing this now i didn't touch this i wanted to but before i would touch it it is the extent of the backing which is a product of the submission look how long they are keeping it waiting i'm not even near it now you are not seeing them man of god this is the secret and everybody's watching apostle you must be a mystery you've been this has been hanging for 10 minutes no it is not the man it is the, look at the size of this man please drop it down sirs. stand here again i do not want you to forget this for the rest of your life come close to me now we're going to act a one minute drama come gentlemen come and try to fight me all right you come just do your best guys defend me now hold on hold on hold on let's start with this man you try to fight me come you can overpower him so you see i can be a victim because this guy is clearly is that true but you go back come now all of you remember how you always stand now i'm the only one he's seen but he does not know what is in front of him you come come watch this watch this keep pushing he's stubbornly trying he believes after two years he will succeed oh what what a wasted effort I will not be afraid. 
of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about but thou O oh Lord had a shield from me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh Lord and a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head. listen to me is it not a reality in your places of work that when they promote you there are certain things that come with that promotion there is a level you get to they give you an official car there is a level you get to they give you an orderly there is a level you get to where there is now a heightened security system there is a level you get to where the door answers to only you it uses your fingerprint go and try to enter the asso rock and then you will know that it is a secure place go and try to enter the white house believers hear me i'm not wasting your time believe me we're going to pray for some of you this is all you have for 10 years you have refused to understand this submission no matter what your titles are called bishop apostle that's not what the realm of the spirit believes your submission whereas look at what was destined for you this is the kind of backing that was supposed to follow your mandate this is the kind of backing that was supposed to follow your business this is the load you want to lift some of you don't even have any backing you are alone you've been struggling for 10 years getting jealous and getting angry and say no anybody that leaves this must be a demonic person no refer to point one spiritual illumination the miracle of open eyes to see that if this thing is ever lifted if the sick are ever healed that you hear someone say oh the power of god is touching someone now it is not magic this is what happens in the realm of the spirit do you know my prayer for you that you build such stamina in the spirit come close gentlemen that you get this kind of battle come as close as you can to me watch this look at this level of spiritual fortification now he can send you if he sends you anywhere you can go he can send you to governments to presidents and you come in the name of the lord in the name of the government that backs you someone you need to relinquish trying to go in your name ask the prodigal son he's taught us a lesson for as long as he was under the authority of his father there was no lack there was no fear but the moment he left his father and was under his own authority he began to plunge until he stayed with swine Businessman, hear me. Preacher, hear me. This is the voice of the Spirit to you. If you are waiting for time to change this, nothing will happen. You will need to submit. Hallelujah. Can you spare me 10 more minutes? I need to teach you how we submit in this kingdom. Because if I just wrap up like this, there is the third law, but I'll probably leave it for evening. So that we'll just use it and just move to the miracle service. But never forget this. Never forget this. Lord, a greater backing. A greater backing. A greater backing. This is my prayer. I have seen this in the realm of the spirit. This is what gives me confidence. I don't just travel to go. No, sir. I don't know the challenges that are here right now. I don't know the problems of people here. Except you want to fake this thing. Can I tell you, if this power is not there, it is not there. You can give explanations, you can give all kinds of things. When the backing is there, one last time, gentlemen, we're going to lift this. Are you ready? This can be financial limitation. This can be whatever in ministry. God is saying, come on to me, all you that are weary. Look how easy I can lift it. Jesus is talking to someone stop running around trying to look for fame and go back 
and submit to his authority in your submission is your immunity in your submission is your strength you will lift many loads now you are not seeing these people you are the one that the world will see behind these exploits impossible feats by the hand of god please drop it down pray in one minute everyone gentlemen may the lord honor you and bless you let's give them a big hand clap as we pray thank you sirs pray in one minute and ask the lord to help you that you have to submit to his authority are we praying hallelujah let me wrap up with this scripture matthew 26 and verse 36 matthew 26 and verse 36 matthew 26 and verse 36 please bring for me the people who start running out right now by the anointing while these people were lifting this i started seeing very strange angelic manifestations for one of them you had a dream in that dream it's like you saw me laying hands on you this is what happened in the dream the power of god is going to come upon you right now there are a few of them and some of them will start running by the anointing hold them please bring them out very quickly please bring them quickly we're going to pray i want to teach you this matthew chapter 26 very quickly please this is jesus let me show you how submission happens in the kingdom please hold them so they don't injure themselves there is a woman here god is opening the prophetic dimension for you there is an anointing coming on you right now as i'm speaking and the lord is saying i should tell you do not be discouraged that he is going to use you very mightily it will start with heightened dreams prophetic experiences and encounters help them please this is what the lord is saying supernatural prophetic encounters of the spirit this is not some showmanship please god is in a serious business of helping us to understand it is the backing of heaven the backing of heaven over your life when you say it remember and it happens it is proof that there is authority and power please help them i just acted something for you here that is a very accurate picture of what happens in the realm of the spirit so that now you understand that these things do not just happen believe me when i tell you it does not fail we are talking of the power of God. The power of God. We are going to round up. But now while you bring them out, just pay attention to this. The Bible says, Then come at Jesus with them to a place called Gethsemane. Help this woman please. This is God's idea of submission. Pay attention. Hallelujah. Victoria, 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 we have to work with time. I'm hearing a name, Victoria, Victoria, you are wearing a yellow veil, like a yellow cloth, a yellow veil. Is there someone like that, Victoria? Please verify so that we... Uh, very, what's her name from where hallelujah because I'm seeing that the Lord is bringing a visitation where, where is your family here I want to pray for you you believe in the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ I stretch my hands captivity goes now out now in the name of Jesus Christ 
who is the son of the living God. Can I tell you, some of you, what you are seeing tonight, God is transporting it into your life and into your ministry, into your various assemblies. I'm telling you this by the spirit of the living God. Power, you call it the days of his power. The days of his power. Um, is there someone, is it Ekene or Ekanem? Something like that. What's your name? Come, what's your name? Huh? I cannot see Come. Look at me. You believe in the power of God? What do you do? You are a pastor. Because you are going to step into this man. There is an evangelistic grace on you. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will never be the same. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's finish this please. Look up please. The Bible says then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And said unto the disciples. Sit here while I go and pray yonder. While standing, let's pay attention. Number two, he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to sorrow and was very heavy. The beginning of the process of his passion now. Number three, he said unto them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry here and watch with me while he's praying now. Next verse, he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying now look up please this is the hallmark of submission in the kingdom father if it be possible this is my own agenda this is what i want to do nevertheless not as i will but as thou will the bible says when you read the other verses he prayed it again that means the hallmark of submission in this kingdom is when you get to a point where you lose the ability to tell God no. Lord, this is what I want to do with my life. This is what I want to do with my money. This is what I want to do with my brain. This is what I want to do with my destiny. However, I submit to you. Whatever you want is what I will do. Where whatever you say is what I will do. Can I tell you this? You are not truly submissive if you still have a will of your own to fight God whatever god wants to do if it can be done in your life you have contacted the you have stepped into the realm of genuine spiritual power i'm going to pray for you we have a service in the evening please hear me do not forget my teaching on submission many of us are trying to use god stop only saying god i want to go left and i am intelligent i went to school and he says i will respect you but if it is power you will not see it when you want to see power with god you must get to a point where you have no agenda of your own that agenda is to see him revealed and to see him glorified and even if it will cost you you are that willing to say lord your will be done therefore we are going to pray one prayer right now father like abraham laying down isaac I lay down my will for yours. Go ahead. Use me as you wish. Let Jesus be glorified through my life. Go ahead and pray. I lay it all down again. We're wrapping up. To hear you say that I am your friend. Help me find a way Would you bring me back to you? Shalakata balakata Wave your hands to Jesus in surrender You're all I want You're all Listen to me. For some of you, this is the financial mountain standing before you. You have done everything you know to do. Apostle, I'm a contractor. Leave the issue of contract now. We're not talking contract. 
we are talking relationship with the government that's what will supply the backing and the favor apostle i'm a man of god it's because of my location that's why church is not growing it's not true it is because of the low level of the backing when you are really backed by god even in the wilderness god will send men when gideon submitted to the authority of the lord he blew a trumpet and 32,000 people from everywhere they came everything that has not been working in your life today it might be because it is lack of submission but i have come here by the privilege of god's grace under the leadership of your pastor let me speak over someone's life believe me when i tell you what i say will come to pass remember what i taught you we do not speak empty words there is a government that backs what we do i speak right now every door I declare, may that door be open now. Open now. Everything distracting you, making God look like an interruption to your advancement, distracting your hunger for God, distracting your fire for spiritual things. I cause it now by the God of heaven. In your submission is the lifting of your ministry. In your submission, another word for submission is surrender. In your surrender is your greatness. Some of you are crying, don't be ashamed of your tears. In your submission and your surrender is your relevance man of god you will not become relevant just because you are traveling around no your relevance is tied to your surrender your prosperity in the kingdom is tied to your surrender now let me pray for those in front in the name of jesus christ he's brought you out by his spirit step into a new season by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ now please let me encourage you whatever it is that you need to do to make sure you are here tonight with your family members if you can explain to them that there is a move of the spirit in this place there are overflows even if there's no space climb the zinc and sit there but whatever it is because tonight i'm going to be praying for people and one of the graces one of the things i believe will happen tonight we're discussing power there will be an impartation of graces listen that dimensions you did not function in hitherto by the privilege of the grace of God you know a man of God who needs to be here you know a businessman who needs to be here you know someone who is is within town and needs to be here but I want you to call them this is not about um, you know just trying to come and honor a man this is Jesus Christ wanting to reach people you know people hello Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.